everyone, welcome to Studio Sunday. We hope you've had a good week, and we certainly have. We got all the pre-orders for the 2022 sketchbook out this week, and we're so happy. They look so good, and we're actually a bit early with them. These guys. The hardcovers went out. Mm -hmm. So all of you all of you that pre-ordered the hardcovers, if you don't already have it, you will have it very shortly. Thank you so much for doing that. It really helps us. It's kind of like our own mini Kickstarter. It helps us yeah. pay for the print run. Yeah. We still have hardcovers available on the website as well as the soft cover now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so hardcover, soft cover. Yes. Terry's um Oh, we pushed the printing date for Parker Girls up a week. So the last day to subscribe is June 19th. Mark your calendar if you want to subscribe. That's the last day. After that, you have to order each one individually. Terry's almost finished, and he'll be tweaking everything to get it ready for the printer. It's exciting to have a new series, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I really enjoy doing it. You do? Yeah, I do. I really do. I love, I love the story. So I haven't looked at even one panel. <laughs> That's kind of frightening when I think about it. <laughs> uh, well, I hope you like it. Uh, but, you know, it's like starting a new movie that you really like the setup. I'm excited. Okay. So, um, June 19th, don't forget. If you want to subscribe, that's your last day. Is that my deadline too? No, your deadline is... Tomorrow. <laughs> your deadline <laughs> is June 18th. Terry's also sketching away for San Diego. Mm -hmm. Come by and check out all the original art and sketches if you're going to be at the show. Um, we're in our usual booth, 2109, on the main aisle. Right in the middle. Yep. So, hope to see everybody there. We haven't been there. This will be three years since we've been. Gosh, that 2019. is hard to I know. So, we're all kind of looking forward to that and, yeah. and seeing everyone again and yeah. making new friends and seeing old friends and enjoying that gorgeous weather and that delicious food. I assume everyone's changed a lot and we won't recognize them or... Maybe you know. everybody should be wearing their uh, name badge. Yes, wear a name badge because and we're not going to And put it up by your, like, by your chin so we can see it. So we're not staring at your belly button trying to figure out what your name is. You can pin it to your mask. <laughs> make it flat. That's right. They're requiring masks this yeah. year, so... They don't want a super spreader. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, well, that's it for me. Do you have anything to add, Mr. Moore? No, I'm totally involved in this now. So all I can talk about is Parker Girls, day and night, 24-7. And I'm working on the, the mystery and the plotting and all that, you know, and how it all comes together. Okay. So people, you know, when people say, do you, when do you write? How do you write? Like right now is when I'm really writing a lot. I've already started drawing, but I'm still writing what happens after these pages. Okay. Well, you ready to get on the hot seat? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, jump on. Okay. Why are you sitting on a towel? Um, because I've worn this seat out and it kind of like that. So I have a towel under here, like like a bus driver who brings his own comfy pad, you know, for the seat. Yeah, like an old car. Okay, the first question is from Thiago, um, and it came from the comments on last week's Studio Sunday. Oh, okay. So he says... Robin, does Terry work best under pressure? And that's all I copied from it. For some reason, I know there was a little more. <laughs> but that was the gist of it. He said he was nervous just knowing that the deadline was coming up. How do you feel about it? I, I'm nervous that he's nervous. I mean, <laughs> he knows something I don't know. I, I'm so into the story that sometimes I forget to be nervous. I'm just into it. Um, I got to tell you, some like right now is when I don't see how I can possibly make that deadline, but somehow it keeps happening. You know, I mean, I, I'm just taking my time, and going over each page very carefully. I'm thinking, you know, by the end of the year, this issue will be really good, finished, and I'll be ready to let go. <laughs> You'll be ready to turn it in yeah. in January 2023. <laughs> yes. So that must be Great. what it's like when people take a year off to do an art project, and they're thinking. Well, I'll just tweak a little bit today, you know. I don't think that's the case. I think most people start full blast and go until it's done. 
unlike some people that I know very personally who piddle around and piddle around and piddle around, and then when their hair's on fire, they sit down and do their work. Well, with all that piddling they did, they should have plenty to put out the fire, so. Well, you would think. Yeah. You would think that they would start a little bit earlier so they wouldn't mm -hmm. have to do that. But I think that you have to be under pressure to get the pages done. I think when you have a lot of time, you don't do as well. You don't focus as much and you don't really dig to get the story. You're just looking out the window. Oh, look, there goes the plumbing truck. Oh, oh my. No, I'm not looking it's time for another Dr. Truck. Pepper. I'm thinking about a plot with the plumbing truck. <laughs> what if it was carrying a navy? So spaceship? I think you actually work better under pressure. Yeah, I guess so. Um, one of the things that I do know about my working is the I do my best work when I can really shut everything out. So as if you were focusing on your an activity, you know, it's an activity for me. It's, it's, it's something physical and I have to really totally focus just like you would on any other physical activity to get it right. But you say that and you say, well, you've got to get all these other things done to get able to prepare for it. But when you're under that deadline, this house can be a madhouse and you focus totally on your story. Yeah, I so, shut everything out. So you can do that whenever you want. Mm -hmm. It's when you have all this extra time that you don't want to do that. Well, I feel a little guilty about shutting people out of my, my circle, but I have to do it because the other people don't have a book to do. I do. So I have to, at some point I can't share life with them. I just have to sit at the table and just do my thing. And I think it's a little selfish sometimes, but that's how the book gets done. That's how you work. That's how I work. I, am I the only one? I think so. I think everybody else works. They do some and they do some more instead of waiting and trying to cram it all in. So they're, the other people are like well balanced in yeah. their lives? Yeah. That's sick. <laughs> it's something you don't understand at all. No. <laughs> Thank you, Thiago, for your question. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a great one, man. <laughs> okay, yeah, the second question is about your process. Do you write, pencil, wait, do you write, pencil everything, then ink everything, or do you pencil and ink as you go? I find it quicker if I ink as I go. It probably is quicker. Um, so I do it both ways. Right now, like for instance, the opening scene for the book um, is eight or nine pages long and I penciled it all and penciled the lettering and didn't necessarily lock in the lettering yet. Um, because I expect to do changes and revisions, a second draft, a third draft, and it's a lot easier to make those second and third draft changes in the pencil than it is to, you know, I committed to ink and now everything that wants to be changed is a big deal. So if I know, if I'm confident about the scene I'm doing, the four page scene, uh, I'll, I can pencil and ink as I go. Um, but if I really anticipate, I'm gonna want a second pass with this, keep it in pencil. Do you know going in if you think you're gonna need a second pass? I did this time. I, I knew because it's the launch of a series and um, now is when you, lay the foundation and also plant things for people to look late, look at later. Um, and everything has, everything in the opening scenes are like a first issue. Everything has a sub, subtext. So like if whatever they have in their hands or how, whatever words they use is really important. Um, you're, they're using loaded sentences and things like that. And it's, those are all your clues as a detective. So, that's the kind of thing, exactly the kind of thing you would be changing and modifying as you get a better idea. Or maybe by the time I finish the whole nine page sequence, I think, you know what? I've decided they work for the other side or whatever. And you can change it, you know? So, yeah, a lot of you, it depends on your re-editing process. Do you a lot of people re-edit in the writing of their script, Yeah, but you re-edit while you're actually physically drawing. I get so much inspiration from the performance of the characters. Um, 
I'll have a general idea of the character, but when I start drawing them, they come to life. And when they kind of have a lot to do with how they talk, and then when I start giving them language and they start presenting themselves to the other characters, um, I, I get other ideas. Wouldn't it be cool if they were keeping this secret or they were setting that person up or whatever, and then it just one thing leads to another and you've, you've got something different than I personally don't know if I could have had if I just stayed on, on the script. Just in the script alone, you're just trying to be a clever writer with a clever plot. But when you get into the drawing and the performance, then something even better takes over, which is the truth of the moment and what are people hiding? You know, and sometimes I don't necessarily- They're hiding something? They're all hiding something. <gasps> oh boy, this is gonna be a good one. I know, I'm telling, <laughs> I should have just titled the book Hiding. <laughs> what are you hiding? Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a different, there's a third layer beyond, you know, scripting and plotting. There's a third step to go to. And I you have, prefer to edit in that third step. Yeah, I, well, that's the step I end up on all, of, all the time. I always end up on that step, however I got there. And then once I have it, then I go over it again and see, can I, can I make this cooler, better, smarter, or, or, or do we need indicators towards something later or, or whatever. So I always end up there. Okay. Well, that's the good thing about being a cartoonist. The only people who are finished when they finish the script is the writer. But as a cartoonist, you've still got a chance to kick it up a notch. Okay. I hope that answers this question. That's it for me. What are you drawing today? Um, well, I'm going to take a, pot, a break from working on the actual Parker Girls. And somebody was asking me about expressions, um, about how they can change so much with just the, the littlest line. And sometimes you make a mistake and it makes a great expression or you just cannot get, you know, you've drawn a mouth a bunch. So I thought, well, I'd take one more look at that, about drawing expressions on the face and how you can get one face to have 50 different subtle expressions. And it means so much to the delivery of the words speaking of, you know, uh, making the script come alive. So the, the expression is where another part of the writing happens. The artist is also the writer when they present the performance, you know. You can, you can make something look like the truth or a lie by how you draw it. Well, you can. <laughs> a lot of people can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you how I do that. So meet me here. Okay guys, so today, um, what I wanted to do was uh, talk about expressions um, and the subtle difference that simple lines can make in a face. It, let's um, let let me draw a face that's kind of craggy first, like a guy, like a detective guy, and because there'll be a lot more lines on the face and things like that. Okay, um, say this is the face of a detective in your story, okay? And got that thick neck. Kind of has a Lou Grant look. Um, okay, if I have this guy looking straight at you and you're telling him why your alibi, say for instance. How do you think it's going? You think he's believing your alibi? Um, you can tell just from the, uh, the, the way the face is a little bit pinched you know, the pinch in here, there's, this is actually, um, here. See, that's frowning. And you could actually put a, a smile down here and it would be a painful smile. And then you have the little line there that's caused by this. 
when you move this mouth out like this, those little fat cheeks, these nice little chubby cheeks, they're gonna to respond to that. If you smile, you get the smile lines. Show and tell. That's where the smile line's from. Did you notice there too that when you have the smile lines, these lines right here, um, they come down and form the chin. And just if you draw the line all the way through, you look like a puppet. But if you erase the line in between, you will get um, a smile line that comes there, a smile line that comes there, and then this man's chin comes in here, like that. It's a simple thing, it's very logical, of course, but um, I say that to be sure that when you are drawing lines up in here, that they do point towards that destination, point towards your destination. Because if you take all this fat off, What you have here go to a skeleton right and that's that's where your skeleton is I don't know if you can see it <laughs> this looks like a wicked choker okay um, I think what I'll do is I, I may have to switch to a different, a lighter pencil to get this done because I notice it's not erasing very well. Okay. Space, do you? leave for the bridge of the nose coming down in here there's the other eye now this uh, that pupil is caught by the descending of that eyelid this pupil will have a completely different situation with an eyelid just happens to be both like that and that to that needs to line up. That's something I'm chasing all the time in my art. Do the insides of the eye line up? And the insides of the eye and the spacing appropriate and the pupils. And the only reason the pupils would never really line up is if you had the face three quarter turned and you're getting, um, you know, a skewing on that. Okay, let's just go with the basic cool side glance and if I just draw a default mouth like this it's either stoic or disdain right here we go okay suppose she likes what she sees Notice how the mouth changed? I, I had to pull the bottom lip up because now the bottom lip is being stretched. So when you stretch it, it gets narrower, right? Same with the top. So they changed height to get them to come back like that. It's something that you, of course, you would think, oh yeah, of course, but uh, think about it and you'll draw it that way. Sometimes you don't even think about stuff like that. You just keep drawing the, the lip you memorized. Like that. Um, okay, what if she really likes what she sees? We would open the eyes a little bit. Still looking in the same direction. And you could 
even open the mouth and just get a genuine smile. Like that. That could be just a smile or it could be a dialogue face. Um, what if she was delivering a zinger? Now close the eyelids down to half so that you get that half high lid, which added, uh, means like attitude. And then just a lift of the corners of the eyes, brows. Not the whole eyebrow, but just the upper corner. Like that. Same smile, but and now the delivery has totally changed. This is when somebody puts you down, maybe. Or you just do a snappy reply. Um, what if you're trying to be more subtle? Lower one of the eyes, like that. And then, if you wanted to, you could bring this cockeyed smile up a little, even a little more, like that. And it's a little more wisecracking. A little more Mary Jane, face it, Tiger, you just hit the jackpot. Um, by the way, that nose is crooked. <laughs> Sorry about that. There we go. Um, okay, here's what I do with noses. Why do I do this? Um, I tend to have a little line right there so that I have sort of an arced bridge and then uh, the end of the nose comes out a little bit. And the way I, I do a little line there is if the light caught it from that direction or that direction, there's some sort of light that caught it. Um, and I do it just to help keep it from being bland like that. You could also just do a little ski slope there. This is kind of a ski slope. And then the end of the nose is kind of upturned like that. It's really, you have to get the balance right. And then that is, I draw a line right there for myself. And that is the um, shadow line, you know. And then there's a fake line here. I don't know why you could have this line and this line at the same time. Um, because they're actually from two different lighting sources. But then I just kind of... fill in the nose a little bit. Um, and I just think it makes the nose pop from the plane of the face. If this is the plane, the nose tends to stand out a little bit. What I, I've learned I can't do, I cannot do this. Because then, now it looks like uh, it didn't look attractive. It did not help the face, right? So I, le I actually leave smile lines off on my faces. Okay, let's change this to koi. Not cod, koi. Kind of a pursed upper lip. You know, the lip is pressed tight and then this kind of Mickey O'Rourke uh, attitude there. Okay. Now, it fits, a, it fits this expression a little more, doesn't it? If we pull the corners up even more, watch what happens. Now it's Sabrina the Witch. Now it's like, oh, I know something. Or I kind of understand what I'm seeing over there. And if you wanted to show, like, watch this. Here's when you're trying your alibi and it's not going over. Kind of a rolling the eyes. kind of a yeah, right. And uh, I think the, um, the eyebrows stay relaxed 
for that face. If you raise the eyebrows, you might actually actually be looking up or something. Um, and maybe we can do even better on this. <laughs> it looks cross-eyed. Let's draw it in for real. Dum, dum. That one looks weird, doesn't it? It kind of changed my whole face. This is kind of cool though. Um, it's starting to look like somebody I used to know in high school. This was the girl who went out um, to the smoking lounge with all the guys, kind of a hippie. She could hold her own with any guys out there smoking and doing all their trash talk. And that's actually was a big inspiration for Kachu that kind of girl I knew several of them growing up um, they were tougher than me but I certainly noticed them here like that kind of has a little attitude there this one might be better if you actually do go ahead and put some cheek on it, right, like that, so that I can, you know, kind of emphasize the cheek. So I pulled out, I pulled away from this, this beautiful thing and gave, gave more cheek. And now remembering my smile line trick, like that, and the smile line there, and that's where you pull the rest of the chin back, the jawline back. Okay, I was just kind of going through some faces there to show you how what you do really changes uh, the way people look and where the emotions and the expressions come from. Um, the expressions come, it can come from the top half or the bottom half and you can mix the two and get irony and satire and um, sarcasm. Uh, sarcasm is often a some sort of upturned mouth with um, disbelieving eyes. Uh, if you put disbelieving eyes with a yelling mouth and you've got a fight, it's a full, you know, it's more like 100% uh, I'm yelling at you. But when you want to get those more subtle 50-50 things like, um, yeah, I, we're not really drawing swords yet, but uh, I don't believe a word you say, then you get into, um, you know, you can have a, 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 the bottom half of the face is letting you finish your sentences. <laughs> But let's make it so that the top half of the face is not believing a word you say, buddy. Let's do that. Like that. And you're saying, oh, but I was with the guys all night and then the car broke down and I tried to call you, but my cell phone was dead. And uh, so I spent the night over at Jack's house and his phone was dead. <laughs> yeah, just keep piling it on there, buddy. Uh, okay, so I hope you've enjoyed that. I think I've used up my time, but um, you can see that just even drawing faces can sometimes get write, write little vignettes for your, uh, write themselves. Um, you could change this back to a really pretty smile now and um, you'd have a whole other script. Um, so, but I'm going to leave it right here where you're trying to explain where you were last night. <laughs> uh, well, good luck with that and uh, I'll see you next week. Bye.